Snapmaker U1. This is probably the most important launch in 3D printing this year because it does not only change the story of Snapmaker, but it also changes the way we print. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to unbox, assemble the Snapmaker and do our very own first print. All right, so quick start guide, looking really nice. It seems really good. The fact that it's on top, very easy to find. It's already a plus for Snapmaker. So what do we have here? It's not only the quick start guide, but we also have safety guidelines, important. All right, let's remove the plastic, some more foam. And what do we have here? Wow, it says Brazil. This is a very good care that Snapmaker is doing because often, Brazil does not get this type of attention. You guys in the US might be used to it, but we are not. Well, I gotta say that the packaging is very well done, very secure, which is a good thing. Try to remove these, all right. And we have a big box. Okay, so what do we have here? Filaments. And we have the power cord with the Brazilian plug. Cool. I'm gonna take care of these in a little bit, but now let's go to the main event. More foam, let's see. Carefully remove it, All right? So this huge bubble wrap that we have here. Let me rotate it so you can see the front of the printer. Gotta say, my first impressions here with the construction of the printer, hard plastic on the side, plastic covers on the inside, feels very well constructed. Uh, it feels very sturdy as well. We have two profiles on the gantry, which is good, good for stability. We don't know, I don't know yet how much is going to vibrate. So being a Core XY, uh, it has a very good, cool construction. Now I'm gonna use Code Trim's help. All right, so we have more tape in here. And from my understanding, what I've seen in the pictures, this, oh yeah, I think this is, it's a connector of the, kind of like their multicolor system hub. Uh, from this side, there's one on each side. So this is where the filament insert is going to be. These are probably gonna be the plugs that you insert the filament. It's actual glass, it's not plastic which is cool, I like it. Ah, look, the magnet, the magnet's on the outside. This magnet's not as strong as some of the magnets that I've seen in other printers with the same configuration, but still, I guess it holds well together. All right, removing this last box. What do we have inside? Another little box, a little blister with all the PTFE tubes, uh, some Allen tools, Lithium grease, a little brush. Ah, that's cool. I like the brush with the glossy and matte black. The traditional tools that we always have into the printers for ages already, all the PTFE tubes. Ah, I mean, and they come in two sets, uh, which I think the longer ones are going to be the ones on the top and the shorter ones are gonna be the ones on the side. So a lot of other things that we are going to be using in the assembly, including the little antennas that it has on the back, that is the guide for the filament but we have an extra hot in, which is good as well, 0 0.4. And now we have the actual new things. Let me remove some of these. But we have the feeder from the left, the little L, and the feeder from the right. So they're gonna go one on each side. It seems like a very simple clip. I don't know how it's gonna be. I still have to read the, the guideline, the assembly guideline, uh, but it seems like it's not gonna be complicated to fit. And then we have each one of the four. So these are very, very similar to things that we've seen in the past uh, so that you can attach your spool to it and then the spool is gonna go to the feeder. And this, from what I saw, it's a little poop bucket, but it's just a little because it does melt a little bit when they are parked over there because they stay at the temperature, the entire process of the printing. So these right here are going to collect those little debris of filament that are gonna fall. We have another layer here with the different tools. So that's good. Uh, the different tools are here and each tool has a hot end inside, obviously, right? Because each one of these is an actual extruder, as you can see here. Uh, so we will be connecting them on the back. So overall tip, get rid of all the boxes, bake the components laid out in the table and then you start your assembly process. Okay, quick start guide, super important. And something that caught my attention when I, when I was browsing here is look at the quality of these images. And one important tip here, then uh, the reason why it's so important to follow the quick guide, they have a specific order for you to do the things. So there is one screw that needs to be tightened before the other one gets loosened. So in order for you to get those right, uh, and you don't, I don't know, 
risk damaging your printer or risk doing a bad assemble that is going to cost you later. Follow the instruction booklet. It's easy, it's faster, and it gives you more peace of mind when you are doing it. And a little disclaimer here, even if you're using this video to assemble your own snap maker, make sure to have your guide by your side so you can always consult if there's something here that you might have missed or even if you just want to consult it and see if you're doing things right. First thing, remove the three screws that we have here. We have two on one side and another one on the left side. And the cool thing, they have a little arrow, at least in my version, marking where are the screws that you need to remove. The three screws were removed. Now we have to remove six screws, three that are in the back and three that are in the front. They're also marked with the red arrow. Okay, screws removed. Now it says that I need to get rid of these plastic brackets. Up. The last thing that we have here is to remove the protective film from the camera. So let's locate the camera, which is right here. And here we also have the privacy cover in case you don't want that maker to know what you're printing. Now we're going to the most important chapter, the installation of everything that goes on the top here. Let's start. All right. So the first, uh, the first thing that it says here is super important as well to place it on a firm and stable surface or workbench. Don't forget to do that. And now we are going to start with the left feeder. Let's start. Okay. So as it says here, electrical connection first. And this is this plug connected. Awesome. And then look how easy this is. You just put in the holes and then slide it to the back. Simple and yet very stable. Then there's some information here on how to detach it. So you press this little lip and then you slide it forward and then remove. I'm not going to do it, but this is how you do it. Now I have to insert the shorter PTFE tubes that are going to go from the feeder all the way to slot one and two. So the top one is number one and it goes into this first slot right here. Number two, second slot. So connecting PTFE tubes to these connectors. All right. One connected. Now let's go to the second one. Easy peasy. If I get the hole and then second one. Now right hand side, three and four, electrical connection first. And then you place it on the holes, slide it to the back until it clicks. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, but it's not going to be laid out in the same configuration because the three is going to go on the top and then the four is going to be on the bottom. So let's do it. Now the filament holders and it's pretty intuitive. Number one goes on the top and number two goes in the bottom. And as you can see here, there are two connectors to clickers. They click inside and they need to be horizontally displayed like that. So you got to find the ideal position until it clicks. You do have to press it a little bit heavy. Now number two on to slot number two. Just make sure it's well aligned and press it heavy. One and two done on to the other side. And in here, same thing, three on the top four on the bottom. So I have number four here in my hands. Uh, find the position of the clickers, press it until it clicks. It is, it is a bit heavy. Don't worry. Number three, again, find the orientation, press until it clicks. Okay. So now we're going to go to the waste collector, AKA poop bucket. So I'm going to push it all to the front. And now we have the space in here to install our waste collector. All right, so as you can see, it does have a little recess in here. From what I saw from the image, the recess goes in the back. So find the position. There's a little slider on each side. Just make sure you get it right and then slide it in. It is a little bit loose, not something that worries me, but it is connected. All right, so we have four tool heads. There's only one that is labeled. This one is supposed to be the one that is going to be on the far left position, all the others they don't have a proper order. All right. So grabbing the first and peeling off the label. Okay. Label peeled off. So as it says here, you should have this little red mark visible. And to do that, all you got to do is slide this to the side until it's entirely visible. Okay. So insert the rod all the way through and then slide it to the side and it magnetically connects. And now the exact same process with the three remaining ones. 
adjust it here until it's fully visible. All right, so it's easier coming from the front. You gotta put insert the dowel and you gotta come on your right hand side like that until it shows up like that. And then you slide it onto the proper position. So this is a step that you gotta pay attention to because you can remove the dowel on the wrong side. So just make sure that you are aligning on the right hand side when you are inserting, that you are seeing the dowel coming in. So when you slide, nothing red is showing. This is the indication that everything is correctly assembled, but you do have to pay attention in this step. All right, so now we have to rotate counterclockwise two times on the two indicated holes that we'll be doing right now. So that's one and now two and now on to the other hole that's one and now two and now i have to move the tool head manually onto this square path as indicated on the manual and it says to do the entire path two times so now we are going to tighten those screws back again one and two now for the second one one and two and now we are going to insert the cable inside the ptfe tube holder like that so let's connect the cable through this little plastic part and now after going through all of these screws we gotta connect these connectors here and screw them again Now it's time for the larger PTFE tubes. The only thing you gotta take care of in this step is that you don't put the PTFE tube inside another cable, which I almost did here by accident. Now we have those little clips that we are going to be clipping the cable with the PTFE tube. Okay, as you can see, there is a proper orientation. One of the sides has nothing inside, and the other has some small grooves. The one with the grooves go in the cable. The one is just a tube goes in the PTFE. Well, I gotta say, now that we are at this stage of the assembly process, this product is really well designed. Okay, so now it's time to turn it on. Always verify if you're using the right voltage. In this case, this is a bi volt, so no worries. Time to turn it on. All right, so on the touch screen, we're going to select the language the region and now you have to accept the following terms you can scan with the qr code and then hit accept it now it's going to start all the calibrations allegedly is fully automatic let's see how it goes All right, so for this step of the calibration, we have to clean the nozzle. We haven't printed with ours yet, but I bet since this process might be happening over and over as you are gonna use this printer a lot, and all you gotta do is come in and clean your nozzle just to remove any debris or filament that you might have it in there. I just realized that I forgot to remove this plastic film, which is so satisfying. All right, now when it hits 140, we are going to see it change the tool head for the very first time. It's incredible how fast it is. Now for this step of the calibration, it's asking us to remove the PEI sheet. Let's do it and hit next. Okay, so calibrations without the PEI sheet are done. Let's slide it back and connect it again. And now let's hit next. And it's going to one more time calibrate, but now with the PEI sheet. Okay, so now the three steps are done. Calibration is complete. Let's hit next. We are going to do the filament loading procedure and it should be completely in about approximately five minutes. Now it's time to insert the filaments. And remember, if you get STL Flex Lifetime this month of November, you're gonna get $250 back on Polymaker coupons. Link is in the description. Let's go. Okay, so let's open it up, connect it in and Push it all the way through. It's going to load automatically. Filament number two. Filament's inserted, it's time to hit start and it's going to in-start pushing in the filament. 
Let's print our very first model. Dragon textured. Of course not. We're going to pick something from STL Flix and the chosen one is going to be anti, obviously. So I put in the colors that we've picked. I'm going to slice it. One hour and two minutes. And we're talking about a model with three colors. And look at here, model, tower, and total. There's no flush. Okay, so now let's compare with an A1, right? It would take us three hours and 49 minutes, and we will use in total 57 grams of filament. We are using 20 grams of filament, 19.7, and it's only taking an hour and two minutes. This is actually revolutionary, guys. This is gonna change the way we print. Okay, so let's add the filaments in here. On number one, we are going to put the filament type. It's going to be basic polymaker PLA, and the color is greenish. Filament number two, again, polymaker, PLA, color white, save. And the third one is a basic. Okay, once the filaments are done, I'm gonna click again on the filament tab, loading mode, and I'm going to select which ones I want to load. All right, we are not here to tighten screws and remove duct tape. We are here to print something. Let's do it. All right, so let's hit print. Upload and print. The colors are okay. Select the printer. This one connected. All right. So now it's, now I'm just putting which filament corresponds to what, and it's time to print. Okay, my first thoughts looking at the print, surface quality is really good. Uh, the color change is perfect. I don't see any bleedings. I don't see any marks on the color changes. Overall, I think it's really, really competitive with the majority of the printers that we have out there these days. Just to imagine that we use a third of the time and 25% of the filament to, do, to get to the same result. It's impressive. Okay, so this wraps up our first impressions on the Snapmaker U1. Tell me in the comments below, what do you think about this printer? Are you excited to get yours? Do you have yours already? And which tests do you think we should perform on these? Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.